Spellbook. This is a competitive game for one to four players, so it does come with a solo mode. And I happen to have played it at all, all numbers of players. Three and four during game night, then two and three with my family, and again also solo. In this game we are wizards and we are learning spells, I guess. We're still training. Spells are represented by cards, and you're gonna receive seven of them during setup. One for each kind, red, purple, green, black, white, yellow, and blue, and a player aid here. Now, each player has a deck with three cards per color. So you have three black, three in the purple, of the purple type, three red, and so on and so forth. A player will shuffle the cards of each color and then will draw one randomly, say, oh, I, uh, that's divination. And every, all of the players will also take the divination for that kind. And then we, the player draws a red one, which is eruption, and everybody also takes eruption out of their deck so that they are randomly selected one per type at the beginning of the game but each player will have exactly the same display of seven and as you learn the game they recommend uh, uh, certain groups uh, to uh, play with but in the main game uh, then the display will be randomly selected randomly formed now, uh, there is going to be an altar that display there that goes in the middle of the table and during setup you draw five tokens and they are the currency of the game. They represent magical energy and knowledge and they are identified by a color as you can see and also by a symbol. And this is important. Then we have a personal display for each player, very nice, representing the little helper that is helping you learn the spells. And you will store tokens here and that will help you score points because at the end of the game, and you will store tokens there, the action is called storing. And you place them, of course, from the lowest value going up at the end of the game. The highest visible value, 7 in this case, will be uh, points that you score. Also, you will learn spells by placing tokens on them. And when you manage to do so, you will also... Whee! Uh, you will also unlock abilities, so for example if I place the token there and learn the spell at that level I can use the ability next to it and any ability underneath it. Also, uh, most spells are associated with an amount of victory points, uh, so if I learn that one that would give me uh, 3 points, uh, if I learn that one, uh, say a level at this level here, 5 points. And so on and so forth. The game continues, the world will go on until a player has learned seven spells, so that means that they have a token on each, uh, on each of the seven cards, or until a player has filled up their personal display. Whichever happens, that triggers the end of the game, players take an equal number of turns uh, as, as based on who has the starting Token, play your token and then you add all the points together and you see who the winner is. Now more in detail, uh, players will alternate taking turns and there is no interaction during a player's turn, meaning sometimes some of my actions will cause you to draw a token but there is no real interaction. So when a player, the active player is taking their turn, they can take up to three actions, a morning action, a midday action, and an evening action. You can also skip any and all of them, but you still have to take them in order. If you skip midday, you still have to do morning before evening. Each phase of the day has a default standard action, which is already available at the beginning of the game, or each phase allows you to take an action for, uh, for that phase. For example, here we have these two cards that are morning cards. And that means that if this is my situation, during the morning I can take the default action or that action or the one underneath. Now, another interesting thing is that uh, the number of like how many uh, 
carts you will have in the morning or in the evening uh, or in the midday will change depending on the random uh, selection of the cards, which is kind of pretty neat. Now, so you'll take a morning, a midday, and or an evening. Morning is when you collect energy, so you can take one from the altar that starts with five placed there randomly from the bag, or you can randomly draw two. Or you can take a morning card action again if you have one. Midday, you can store one from your personal pool onto your familiar board. And that's when you do that. Or you can take a midday card action if you have one unlocked. Oh, look at that. I have the action of swapping three with the altar. And it just so happened I had three in my in my pool, so I decide to swap them that way, which makes so much sense. It's not like I'm doing things randomly. Why would I do that? Just an example. Store with familiar or take a midday card action. Evening is when, if possible, we will want to try to learn a spell, which is when we place a token on one of our spell cards. Or again, you guessed it by now, I take an action on a card with an evening symbol, if I have one. Now. How do you learn a spell? As you can see, again, each spell has three slots uh, representing the level at which you can learn each spell. You need to spend tokens of the corresponding colors, so yellow if I'm placing a token on this card, and three yellow if I want to learn at this level, four or five for these other levels. And so I spend simply uh, tokens of the color. Also, I can spend tokens of any other color, three of them with the same symbol on it, regardless of color. So these three, if I discard and count as a wild, as any one of any color. So with this combination here, I can learn yellow at uh, level four, or this one here, which doesn't give me any action incidentally, but will allow me to score two points per other spell at level four or more at the end of the game, or one point per other spell in general. Well, I wouldn't, there would be no reason for me to go to that lower level there. And so yellow and blue in Central DC, they don't have the symbols of the phase of the day because this one will give you scoring things. This one also, uh, this one will give you permanent uh, abilities. So they're just things that don't apply to specific phases of the day. This is the general idea. After I've taken my turn, I look at the altar and see what's what's there. If there are five to uh, nine, five to nine tokens on the altar, I draw a new one from the bag and I add it. If there are fewer than five, then I simply draw from the bag until there are five. And if there are ten already there, then they're all discarded and and you draw and you draw five new ones that go there. Also, you have a hard limit of nine tokens that you can have in your hand, which means that, uh, well, for some of the higher spells, it can be a limit that you have to really work uh, around with, uh, within. So, it will impact the game. And just a quick, a quick look, you can pause if you want, so you get a sense of some of the actions. Then these are some of the things that you can do. Some uh, abilities you can see they have a, a only a limited number of uses. If you get a higher level, then you need to decrease them. And different ways to manipulate things. Materia is the is the tokens basically. Different things. So again, you can copy the player's actions, things like that. But again, it's not exactly an interaction, in my opinion. So, learn spells, store tokens on your familiar board, and play until the end of the game, count all your points, and hope that you had more than anybody else, because if that is the case, you win the game. This is a lovely game, I really like it. The production looks so pretty, those like shiny, transparent plexiglass 
It has the material tokens, it looks great, the art looks nice, and gameplay is very fun, simple, once you get used to it. I mean, if you are a committed player, of course, this uh, this is not complex at all, but also played it with casual players, and I saw that at the beginning they struggled a little bit to see all of the different moving parts. But there are echoes of Splendor, there are echoes of Libertalia with the, with the different timing for the different actions, but but these ingredients that you may have seen somewhere else, they come together in a very nice way that feels like it's, it is its own thing. And with the variable setup, with the variable synergies and combos, then that's, that's really fun because the game will stay fresh uh, because certain things will simply not be profitable without a synergy in certain games, but it'll be more interesting in others. And that's what, again, uh, the, the opportunity cost that you have for all of these actions is one of the most fun and interesting things. Because, well, I have two morning actions, so I have to decide once I unlock them. Well, one to start with in 232, uh, because you take one and you choose it or you draw two. Interesting decision. Then I may have up to two morning actions available and I have to choose which one. Uh, later, well, the midday action, storing, will guarantee some points at the end of the game. But if I have unlocked the midday action, uh, well, that is also pretty good. So I have to decide what to do there. And the same when you get the uh, evening action or the, uh, or, or the standard evening action, which is learning spells, which is fundamental. And again, the idea is I should have learned the spell now at level 3 or wait for another level, wait for another turn and get it at another, a better level, more points, more effects. But what if somebody else starts rushing the end of the game? A lot of very interesting, yet very simple, yet very intuitive decisions that emerge there. So it is just the kind of game that I really enjoy because you have uh, interesting decisions to make all the time, but the general core is pretty simple. But it is embodied by a different tree of decisions every game because of the variable setup. Um, it comes with a solo mode, which I also try, which is super simple. It is the kind of solo mode that I like, which is super smooth to run. I don't want to spend half of the time performing the moves of the AI. Matter of fact, the moves of the AI, you take a token from the altar and you place it on a board and that's it. And that means that it's a timer. The longer it takes you, the more points the AI will score. Some actions may place extra tokens there, giving the AI extra points, but I'm playing my turn. I'm placing a token there and that's the AI. Now I'm playing my turn. AI I play my turn. So my attention is on my own strategy and I really get to enjoy the game that way. That also shows you, however, that really there, is no, there isn't any significant interaction in the game uh, because you could simply replace the AI by giving them points. None of the actions that the other players will take will really impact you all that much. Again, from time to time you get a token, uh, which can be great, but they're not gonna probably design their strategy around that too much. So there's a sort of peaceful thing, it's like a parallel race toward the objective so that it doesn't feel very confrontational, but that also means downtime. That means that, uh, uh, that I enjoyed it the most solo, two players, and with three players there was already a bit of waiting. Four players, well there were just more waiting and no advantage from there being four players, and so I don't think that's when the game shines the most. So I'm definitely gonna recommend it uh, for two or three players and for the solo mode. For players, hey, maybe you like it, but I just found that it was a little too slow and had too much downtime in between things, especially because maybe I had already planned my turn ahead, and so when it came my turn, I would just execute it, and then I have to wait a little bit. So, Spellbook, I like it. I like it a lot. This it looks good. It plays well. Interesting decisions. Smooth gameplay. Definitely a winner in my book, or I should say, my spell book.